Hey cuties, the season of love is upon us, and with another valentines comes another banner. Let's check the bouquet out to pick out the thorns from the roses. Talk to me later. Are you a fan of moving your units brainlessly, hoping things somehow work out in the end? If so, Takumi Nakata's got your card. The majority of his abilities are activated after moving, and he has a lot. On strike, he also has healing, charge denial, and a chance of death resistance that complements his large attack range and double hit well. And that's all well and good, so where do you use him exactly? And that's the neat part. You don't. It's amazing how he has so many effects packed in his kit, and yet none of these combined produce a single worthwhile outcome. With his extremely low rate guts tanking, Takami Nakata can stay on the board longer to tickle the enemy, provide scraps for ally support, and waste all your moves. Maybe things will work out if you give him a chance, but don't sell yourself short. You deserve someone far better. Masanori. We heard you like calm clears, so Masanori has taken the liberty to prepare a warm welcome to your favorites. In a shockingly generous manner, he amplifies your shot and snipe calm clears with three distinct amps, while providing one bonus amp for a good measure on turn one. Don't let this strategist deceive you though. The turn 1 bonus is there to mask his apparent weakness for that same turn, his inability to guaranteeably get everyone into position in the same move he uses to bestow his amps. It's a deal breaker for farming if you don't have some other way to deal with this first turn reliably, but for challenges, as long as you get into position eventually, the amount of team amp he brings for a 4 star deserves recognition. It's clear he's quite thoughtful of both his strengths and his weaknesses. Why not give this poet a chance? This gardener has been working the fields for a while. It seems he wanted to debut dead on arrival in the burial pit he dug himself. Hippolytus, you may not be completely useless, but in practice you largely are due to your extremely situational best use cases. Let's list the ways. Potential for permanent uptime of ally flat damage reversal. Specialization into boss killing at low health. Limited damage and debuff mitt, and decently high charge uptime for moderate damage. Flat damage itself is a situational effect to counter, as is single target frontline boss skilling. It certainly doesn't help that you don't come packaged in with death resistance to safely reach the low health threshold for that mode of attack. I'll be sure to pull you out the rare times they need you, then dump you for anyone else after. You're into that, right? Have any friends that bring out your inner delinquent? Taishakten is in many ways like Labe's Jurassic variant. He offers board-wide amp and pronounced local amp. While his protective features are more humble, he takes on a more aggressive utility of taunting the enemy, controlling their movements to bring them in range and to keep them there. He's not content with just sitting in place though, and is eager to rough those and fray whenever you need him. In principle, farming with row clears is far less generally useful than farming with column clears. It doesn't help that rogue players are typically afflicted with unreliable rates and inconvenient timings. Tai Shakuten stands as the pride of this mishandled archetype, with reliable, extreme personal damage. In the occasional situations rogue clearing can work for farming, sign me up for that second love. Christmas, Christmas Jurong looking at us wannabe. Who said that? Like Jurong, Krampus is a board wiper on demand, whose trigger is being displaced during the movement phase, and has some defense utility besides. Unlike Jurong, you don't have to move him directly to get his full damage, and you can trigger his even term amp early if you debuff him. He also builds his charge a lot faster in a more passive manner, can inflict a defense mitt locally, and has some additional debuff mitt. Honestly, he has many subtle perks over Jurong, but also a few downsides. His quick charge only lasts for the first 10 turns. He lacks damage outside of his board wipe, and most notably, he can't take advantage of any affiliation perks. In reality though, they both play very similarly, and they play fantastically well with each other too. Let's call this a late Christmas miracle. With all these handsome suitors, who among them will be receiving your roses? This season of The Bachelor turned out quite well. So, is this just me, or does it seem pretty similar to some previous seasons? While both Krampus and Taishakten make great dates, they don't exactly bring anything too new to the game. Masanori's alright, 
But you can definitely skip that second date with Takumi Nakata or her followers. Well, if you're still missing a board wipe amp, a board wiper, or a calm clear amp. But for most veterans of this game we call love, you may want to save your roses for the next semester in the far horizon. That's all for now, cuties. Catch you next time!